What's the purpose of a Tesla Powerwall? Why do you need a backup to your solar system? Today I'll cover this topic and explain in more detail why my family chose to have a backup solution on our solar system. Let's start with how a normal tied to the grid solar system safety works. The solar system must cease power from the grid to operate. This is a protection feature. If your electric company removes power from the grid and the lineman begins working on the power lines, this person doesn't want power sent down the line toward them. It would be unreasonable to think that they could go around and turn everyone's generating systems off. So PV systems that are tied to the grid have to sense power coming from the grid in order to work. If there is no power coming from the grid, then the solar system will perform an immediate shutdown. This means that if the sun is out and it's a nice day and you lose power, you will not have power and your solar system will shut down. Let's take a look at what happened to my system on March 8th. Here you can see that during one hour their production fell. In looking at the screenshot, there's a drop around 10 a.m. If I open my Tesla app, you can see that our house was on battery backup for six minutes, meaning we lost power for six minutes. I would never have known that we were on battery backup if I hadn't checked the app because I have a battery backup system. If I had not had a battery backup system, then I would have lost power just like everyone else on the street, even though I was capable of producing 14 kilowatts. But wait, I have a battery backup, so why did my solar system turn off? If you think back, I said that solar systems cut off to save the electrician from getting shocked. This still applies to houses using battery backup if that house is not using all of the power being generated. If your house is only using 4 kilowatts and your system is capable of producing 14 kilowatts, that power has to go somewhere. That somewhere is back onto the grid. Tesla built this safety feature into their gateway. The gateway knows my house is only consuming 4 kilowatts and it knows that the power walls are fully charged so they can't take the extra power. If the solar array continues operating, it would have sent 10 kilowatts back down the line. Because of this situation, the gateway turns off the solar array. How does the Tesla gateway do this? Well, I'll not bore you with details here, but alternating current, aka AC, travels in positive and negative directions. Every time it switches from positive to negative and back again, that is counted as a cycle. For a typical Texas house, that cycles 60 hertz or basically one complete cycle 60 times per second. Your household equipment is set up to handle a fast or slow frequency to a point. Solar systems are not designed to be tolerant of frequency changes and will turn off if the frequency drops or increases past the set limit. The Tesla gateway is designed to see how much power is needed for the house. If that number is more than your solar system can produce, then it sends 60 Hz out and allows the solar system to continue operating. This means that you can consume the entire 14 Hz. If my AC had been operating, or if the power walls had needed a charge, my solar would have continued working. However, if your house isn't using what your solar array can produce, then the gateway sends 65 Hz. At 65 Hz, your clocks might run faster, you might notice some flicker on the lights now and then, but the solar system will shut down. Also, as I learned in February during the Texas deep freeze, some UPSs cannot handle 65 Hertz and will not charge, meaning they will continue to beep until dead even though there is power to the outlet. There are some UPSs that can handle a wide range of Hertz, but the three I had could not. That meant we had to unplug everything from the UPS and plug it into the wall outlet. I've since replaced all of them with UPSs that can handle 70 Hz. A lot of this we learned either shortly before the storm or during the storm. I knew that the solar wouldn't work, but I didn't know the UPSs wouldn't work. I knew I was buying a very expensive system to offset most of my power utilization. What I didn't want was to have that system and no power if I lost grid power. So for me, I had to have a backup solution if I was going to be installing solar. The nice thing about getting it all at the same time is that I was able to take advantage of the tax law. I was able to take 26% off the entire solar project and power wall install from my taxes. This will carry over into the following year if your tax liability is not at the same level as 26%, which ours isn't. 
So we'll be getting a rather large check back from the IRS this year, and we'll also receive a rather large check back from the IRS next year to help offset the cost of the system. The 26% is only good through 2022, so you may want to look into solar now. If you do, I highly recommend a battery backup or generator backup as well. Thanks for listening. If you have questions, write them in the comments. I'm not an expert, but I'll do what I can. Thank you.